and we went on a road trip from right here in Huntington Beach to The Rock in Morro Bay for no other reason than to read the Bible. Come with us. Let's go. Welcome to Scripture of the Day, and today we're here in a cemetery because it says in Mark 5 that when Jesus steps out of the boat on the other side of the sea, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So there's a man walking around among the tombs in the cemetery, and as soon as Jesus gets close, boom, the man goes right towards him. Now, listen to this description of this man. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. So we've got a man living in the cemetery with some kind of strength that cannot even be bound. Other men can't bind him. Even shackles and chains can't bind him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was crying out and cutting himself with stones. This is truly a disturbing story that we come to in our chapter today. And it's really interesting to me how Mark spends a lot of time on this story. Remember, Mark is moving immediately. That's one thing that we've seen. He likes to use that word. He likes to tell the stories straightforward, get straight to the point, and keep moving on. But this is 20 verses of Mark 5, wherein he's setting it up that there's this man who lived in a cemetery, who's crying out, who's cutting himself with stones. What is the point that Mark wants me and you to get out of today's chapter? Well, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. What we're talking about here today is demonic possession. And it's interesting to note here that these demons are trembling before Jesus. They know who Jesus is, and they're afraid that they're going to be tormented. And they're coming and begging with Jesus Christ. So I'm not sure what you've thought about demons, but it's clear as you and I are going through the Gospels in the New Testament that demonic possession is a reality. And some people, they seem to see demons everywhere. And some people, they don't ever seem to see a demon at all. But it's clear that there are demon-possessed people. And this man is possessed, it says, by a legion of demons. Okay. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many that means, but I've, I've seen in numerous sources that a legion was like an army of 6,000 soldiers. And here in a minute, as these demons are pleading with Jesus not to be tormented, they say, send us to the pigs, let us enter them. And he gives them permission to go to the pigs and the herd numbering about 2,000 rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Can you imagine that? Thousands of pigs running into the sea and drowning. That is an image you would never get out of your mind. And Mark is telling us this story in all of its graphic detail because he wants to prove to us something once and for all. Jesus has authority over demons. The Bible's clear that there are angels, there are demons, there is a spiritual realm. And in this realm, Jesus Christ is Lord of heaven and earth with all authority. And so I don't know what you think about demons, but we have to deal with the reality that there are demons. Listen to what 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says. It says, now the spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. So not only can demons possess someone and control them like they were this man with a legion of demons, but there is demonic teaching and deception and people fall away from the faith because they hear this false teaching, this teaching of error, and they begin to leave. So demons are out there lying to people. 
Demons are out there using men to teach false things and lead people away from the faith that is in Jesus Christ. That's why in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it commands us, test the spirits. We need to test the spirits to see whether they come from the spirit of truth or whether they are a spirit of error. It says, see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out. Hey, one thing that's a sobering reality is demonic possession of a human being. Here's another sober reality for us to think about. There's demonic teaching out there. Many false prophets are influenced by demons and teaching people lies about Jesus Christ, heaven and hell, about what it means to be saved. There are many people deceived by demons. So it says that you and I, we need to test every message that we hear, whether it's from God or not. And here's how you can know every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that's from God. If it's not confessing Jesus Christ come in the flesh, it's of the Antichrist. Now this is a really concerning thing to think about, the reality of demons. And I encourage you that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Can I get an amen from anybody about that? Satan and the demons do not have power over all of us who are in Jesus Christ. This is good news, okay? So we need to take this seriously. We need to understand what Mark's saying. But then he tells us, again, getting really really detailed in his description of what it's like when these guys who are herding these pigs, they run to the town. They tell everybody, now here comes a bunch of people. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had the legion. But now, look, he's sitting there, he's clothed, and he's in his right mind. And this actually makes everyone afraid. Whoa, how did this happen? We all knew this guy out there living in the cemetery, out there crying out, out there cutting himself with stones. Now here he is looking completely normal and in his right mind. And they're like, whoa, someone is here who has authority over demons. You want to know what's scarier than demons? The Lord who tells the demons what to do. The demons tremble at the Lord Jesus Christ. And this crowd, they're trembling. So we're on the other side of the sea now. And you can see here, there's gonna be a reference to the Decapolis, that's 10 Greek cities. So these people are are Gentiles. This is not the typical Jewish crowd that we see Jesus interacting with during his ministry. This is a Gentile crowd and they're afraid of Jesus. They don't really want anything to do with Jesus. The story goes on, they beg Jesus to depart from their region. And as he's getting into the boat, this man, This man who's been freed from this legion and he's watched the pigs run and drown in the sea, who's now in his right mind, he wants to go with Jesus. And look what Jesus says to him. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. Now, I find this fascinating because a lot of times when we've been reading the Gospels, when Jesus does a miraculous healing of someone, he says, tell no one. And I'm always thinking, yeah, right. If I saw Jesus do a miracle, if he did it for me, I'm going to tell everybody. This time, Jesus actually tells the guy, go home, get get your squad together, get your people together, and you go tell all your friends what I've done for you. Jesus actually sends this man out as a missionary to the Decapolis. Because see, I think Jesus was concerned among the Jewish people that they would get this false messianic hope and it would usher in the end too early when the time was not right. But here with these Gentiles on the other side of the sea, he's like, go ahead and spread the word. Spread the word so more people can hear about the power that Jesus has over demons. And it says he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone's marveling. Everyone's amazed at the miracle that Jesus has done. This miracle that Mark gives us in great detail. I want to encourage you today with this truth that in this world there are dark and disturbing things. There are demons. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ, he is the name that is above all names. We learned that in the book of Ephesians. We preached a sermon called the name above all names. And in chapter 2, verse 21, it says, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named. That's where Jesus has been exalted to. That's where he's been lifted high to. Jesus is the name above all names. And specifically, we're talking about rulers. We're talking about authorities, powers, dominions. These are words for demons in the New Testament. 
So Jesus is great. If you see someone and you're like, wow, I'm not sure what to think about that. Does that person have a demon? Here's one thing you should be encouraged by. Jesus, he's Lord over that. He's, he's got the name above that. You don't need to be afraid of that. You hear some teaching and you're like, wow, that's error. Does that come from demons? That teaching really disturbs me. Hey, let me tell you, Jesus, he's got the name above all names. And he can tell the demons what to do. We're going to get to this uh, idea of spiritual warfare as we continue through Ephesians. We're going to do a whole series of putting on the armor of God. And it says that we can be strong in the Lord. And it says this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our battle is not with other human beings. No, against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. There is a spiritual war going on and you and I can be strong in the Lord. We can put our armor on and the demons cannot touch us because we are in Jesus Christ. And so this is in, hopefully uh, kind of a disturbing story that Mark tells us, but he's telling it to us for a strategic reason because that whole Decapolis, those whole 10 cities, they knew about this man who lived in the cemetery, this man who cried out and cut himself with stones, and they knew probably he was demon possessed. And now they knew the power of Jesus because they saw this man clothed in his right mind, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. You and I can be sure no matter how dark this world may seem, the light of Jesus shines brighter. So let's say it, Jesus Christ is God and the demons tremble before him. That's something to celebrate on today's scripture of the day. Next time on scripture of the day.